change your mind If you change your mind This is highly unexpected, but when you saw my review of Letters to Lost that I've uploaded today, I included a brand new video in the outro, which is this one. My review of Steven Universe Miscellaneous. I've said many times in these videos that, I'm, that I was skipping episodes to the point that they weren't that important. Along with a couple that I ended up sk skipping due to all your schedules being scrapped. But this marathon really changed to me to the point that starting this marathon in September of last year, which is almost a year ago, really had so much effects on my feelings towards this show and to the point that similar to my experiences with My Little Point Friendship is Magic, I want to review all the episodes even though that the feeling is a lot more different. In September of last year, I was trying to be ahead of the game or taking out episodes that were not that important. Granted, my experiences have changed upon rewatching the episodes, but at the same time, I didn't want it to overwhelm myself by reviewing all the episodes that I haven't reviewed. And believe me, if I start off this marathon by revisiting the episodes, but at the same time didn't review everything from Steven Universe when it comes to episodes in the movie, along with the epilogue. I would begin this marathon way before September. Definitely in Summerpalooza for Beach Paradise. But as far as I'm concerned, just because not reviewing all the episodes and then reviewing all of them for a marathon in Summerpalooza... Five would probably have every single day be a uh, double upload, which for me personally sums up a lot that I really wanted to do a single upload in order to keep myself cooled down due to the amount of stress that I went through by reviewing the episodes multiple and then uploading them twice in one day. But considering that I have little plans of coming back to this show after this marathon, aside from one episode that I was originally planning for next year's schedule, only for it to be part of this miscellaneous video. It's best for me to review all the episodes of Steven Universe because to tell you the truth, wrapping up this marathon without reviewing the episodes that I skipped wouldn't feel accurate. And to tell you the truth, I wanted this marathon to be mostly good when it comes to the the videos of September, all the while giving these episodes a chance. So similar to my Carnival's videos, I'm going to be reviewing 9 episodes that I'm going to have timestamps in the description, and I'm going to be reviewing them by release order. Believe me when I say this, this video was really unexpected, but at the same time, it's worth doing right away because for me personally, this is mainly ex this is just mainly extra content for my Summer Palooza 5 Steven Universe Marathon. But before we get into the 9 episodes, let's go talk about the pilot that was released several months before Steven Universe became a show. The time thing, which for me personally, it's going to be unexpected for you guys to witness, but I was originally going to include a review of this episode alongside with Gem Glow on the first day of Summer Palooza 5 Steven Universe Marathon. Because to tell you the truth, this honestly surprised me and I actually watched the episode the first time before I got into the series back in 2020. The pilot of Steven Universe is really bizarre, and it's mostly the fact that it's animated differently when it comes to the character designs of the Crystal Gems, mainly Paul and Garnet, which for me personally, I actually found Garnet's design in this slightly better than her design from the show, but the plot of this episode centers around Amethyst giving Steven an hourglass that he ends up using in order to get back at Laws, which, unlike in the main series, Steven is fully aware that Laws is being a joke to him. 
So he uses the hourglass in order to talk back at Lars when it comes to jokes, but this leads to him accidentally releasing an electric skull who is the antagonist and enemy of this pilot. To be perfectly real with you guys, I found this pilot to be interesting, mainly the fact of how a lot has changed into the final product. Well, Steven is fully aware of Laws being the joke, and when it comes to the Crystal Gems, nothing has changed when it comes to the personalities. Well, Amethyst gave Steven the hourglass, and judging of how these characters are portrayed in the final product, this is honestly a good rep representation on the personalities of the Crystal Gems. Even though that this episode isn't canon to the main series, it's also a good piece of history to understand the origins of Steven Universe, since usually when it comes to pilots, they get greenlit and at times, some don't. And whenever I think about this, it really feels like the unexpected has arrived when it comes to the popularity of Steven Universe. Like, if you didn't watch this series, and when you were in 2013, you actually watched this for the first time, you would have second thoughts of this becoming one of the best cartoons when it comes to the final product. I mean, for how it's animated, even though I did find it somewhat appealing, it kind of makes sense that people are just not into this type of art style in comparison to the final product art style. I know some people are going to criticize the animation in the final product in the later seasons when it comes to the size of characters. But every time I look into this pilot and how the and how the characters are animated, even if I did enjoy it, I have to admit that if they were in the final product, it wouldn't work out for them. Well, except Garnet. I'm just saying, even though the Amethyst's design is still fine for what it is, Paul, on the other hand, is honestly the most odd one in all the character designs from this pilot. But for this pilot alone, I have to admit, the biggest highlight of the entire episode, or pilot in this case, is Stephen singing the main theme to the Crystal Gems. To tell you the truth, I really found it a really good way to showcase what the show is going to be about when it comes to the main theme of the show. And to be perfectly real with you, every time I see this moment right here, a lot has changed. And I'm pretty sure the unexpected will come to people once they see this moment for the first time and experiencing the show that was brand new back in late 2013. As for the battle between the Crystal Gems and the Electric Skull, it's for what it is, and even though that the Electric Skull is really goodly animated, which I would do that awkwardly, to tell you the truth, if that was the enemy, then I'm pretty sure that the Steven and the Stevens episodes will have had an awkward outcome when it came to... An enemy facing off multiple Stevens, and to tell you the truth, I don't even think that the joke of the Crystal Gems questioning multiple Stevens would even work since that since they were since that they were properly distracted or their attention were glued to the electric skull. It will probably be a lot more complicated and a little claustrophobic. So for pilot it's entertaining and you should give it a chance before you get into the series of Steven Universe or if you felt like watching the pilot before heading into the series, because for me personally, it's debatable if you would find this pilot appealing when it comes to multiple pilots from other cartoons, but if the character designs will throw you off, then I don't blame you. But for me personally, it didn't distract me completely. I'm giving this pilot a 6.5 out of 10. The first episode of the nine episodes is Together Breakfast, where Steven makes a breakfast that he wants to share with the Crystal Gems, but apparently they're busy and he storms into one of the rooms in the temple. To be perfectly real with you, one of the reasons onto why I skipped this episode is because it really feels basic when it comes to Steven trying to get along with the Crystal Gems, while in Leo episodes, they explore that factor much more better. So, sitting through this episode, 
it wasn't a waste of time. I can understand this is Steven when it came to season one, but at the same time, watching this episode from beginning to end, it really feels like that this is supposed to be a fiddle episode that didn't took itself seriously aside from the climax towards the end. But I'm not gonna lie, I found a few moments in this episode worthwhile, mainly Amethyst chasing Steven in order to eat the Together Breakfast, which for me personally, there's a reason on to why I include this as the thumbnail, as one of the images of the thumbnail, because it's really iconic and really goodly animated, especially back in 2013. Anyway, the premise of Steven going into multiple rooms in the temple, which leads to him, Amethyst, and Paul heading straight to the Crystal Heart. I'm gonna be real with you, if they had these ideals for later episodes when it comes to the Crystal Heart, I'm pretty sure that there was a lot going on inside of the temple itself, which they did execute when it comes to Rose's room. But the more I think about it, they will probably have more potential ideals when it comes to the Crystal Heart. But since that this leads to the evil spirit that was in the skull that Garnet found in order to seal it away, goes inside of the Together Breakfast and the Together Breakfast turns into a monster. Honestly, there's multiple reasons on to why this episode got skipped. Mainly the fact that the monster inside of the ticket inside of the pancakes and stuff that Steven put on just didn't make me think that this episode was worth reviewing related. Granted, it's not the least review related when in comparison to the other episodes in this video, but believe me when I say this, whenever I skip an episode, it's honestly for the best. And reviewing it for a later time is still a low possibility, but at the same time, I just don't feel like that this episode was really that important to, to begin with. Granted, this is one of the first episodes of Season 1, but believe me when I say this, sometimes it's difficult to get into every single episode, knowing forward that it's just always going to be meh at the end of the day. When it comes to the ending, it makes sense because they don't want to eat the together breakfast with so many things on it, so they ended up buying pizza instead. At the same time, it still feels like that it just made the whole episode pointless at the end of the day. Believe me, I understand they wanted to showcase on them understanding with each other, but believe me, there are so many ways in Leo episodes that execute that, that factor much more better. Which, which is why I'm giving this episode a 5.5 out of 10. It's not the worst, but at the same time, I wouldn't recommend it, even if you're gonna watch all the episodes for the first time, if you're into the show. The next episode is Flyboy, well after not listening to Paul's instructions on the shards that Steven used when it comes to his clothes, he uses one of the shards for the Flyboy costume that PD was in and this gave PD a chance to find a new job and while taking a break he thinks otherwise of how money isn't always the key to happiness. If you want to know on to why I skipped this episode, I described it in my review of Keep Beach City Weird. Well, I described PD's character along with his relationship with Wagnard though. And to tell you the truth, watching this episode from beginning to end, it really feels like that PD will have had a different direction when it comes to his development. But with this being the only episode, well, he's the only main character of, well aside from Restaurant Wars, but he's one of the main characters. It wasn't enough for me to feel sympathy towards him. Even with his relationship with his dad, how they reconcile towards the end, I really feel like that there would have been more if we actually had an episode centering around PD and Ronaldo. though. Believe me, I still stand by that statement in my review of Keep, of Keep Beach City Weird because there was potential. Even if it's even if these characters didn't have the exact amount of amount of focus when it comes to Beach City Citizens in comparison to Laws and Sadie. As for the shards that Paul has been searching for, for me personally, with it being mostly a factor for Steven to use when it comes to helping out PD with his Flyboy problem, 
I will admit, Steven at this point in the series will always act really insecure and always not paying attention to the other characters. So for me personally, I don't have a problem with that, judging of how Steven is just using the gem shot, one of the gem shards in order to help out a Beach City Citizen's problem. But at the same time, when it comes to the Flyboy mascot of this episode, it's honestly one of the reasons on to why I decided to skip this episode. Mail on the fact that the PT stuff just wasn't enough to make it up for me to review it. Believe me, I understand that mascots when it comes to restaurants are a specialty in order to get attention, but when it comes to how the show has been ex executed in the later seasons, when it comes to the antagonists or an enemy that the characters need to face off. I honestly found the whole gem shot inside of a mascot really unappealing. Honestly, the bit while Steven is trying to chase down his pants because one of the gem shots were inside, it also reminds me of the first episode of Jimmy Neutron, Pants Attack, and I would rather watch that episode because it was honestly a lot more appealing than this episode. And the problem that I have with the gem shards when it comes to controlling Steven's pants is because the climax well, the fry boy costume ends up going bizarre. Steven uses the other shards in order to have his clothes come to life in order to stop fry boy, which also leads to using one more shard in his underwear which leads him completely naked. Let me be truthfully honest that whenever a cartoon needs to have a character being naked in a capacity that is way too bizarre, this is also one of the last things I want to see, mainly Steven being naked, because even though that this is one of the earlier times where Steven is still develop developing, to tell you the truth, I can't be able to look at Steven the same way again after this episode, and I'm honestly thankful that he was mature in future because I wasn't able to see the same character like he was in the earlier episodes of season 1. At times, I'm honestly thankful that the animation of the sizes of the characters have changed later on because whenever I think about season 1 Steven, all I can think of is this episode when it comes to his character design. Believe me when I say this, I really feel like that sometimes when the animation needs to change when it comes to some proportions of the characters, it's honestly for the best to have Steven smaller than how he was in Season 1. Even though in some cases he is mostly in the same size as he was in the later seasons in a few scenes here and there. Yeah, there are multiple different reasons on to why I skip these episodes, but when it comes to this, these issues are more of a reason on to why I skip this episode more than the last episode, which sums up a lot that at times, reviewing all the episodes as the original plan if I didn't review all the episodes would have been a nightmare. Believe me when I say this, this episode isn't bad, but at the same time, being honest about an episode can be a lot more draining knowing full well that the episode itself just doesn't have anything to offer when it comes to your perspective in, your perspective in general. With that being said, I'm giving this episode a 5 out of 10. And oh boy, we're here when it comes to one of the three Onion episodes. Onion trade really made me have complicated feelings towards and there are multiple reasons of me skipping this episode for how complicated and difficult it is to understand Onion's character. Now, the episode describes on the fact that Onion is a troublemaker, which is one thing, but for how he's executed in this episode, along with the other two Onion episodes that I'm going to be getting to later. This episode made me think of Onion's character way too much rather than the epic proportions of Steven and Onion trading. Because the premise is that Steven is trying to find Ranger Guy in to, to add to his collection because it's way well defined. And when he saw Onion having Ranger Guy after having multiple 
mini action figures that he found in a action figure machine. Onion wants more, so he uses a replica wand that Amethyst gave to him, and since it wasn't enough for Onion, Steven ends up trading the replicator wand to Onion in order to get the Ranger guy. Honestly, the problem with these episodes centering around Onion is the fact that they have to dumb down Steven. Now, in this episode, it makes sense. It's part of the fourth season. But when it comes to the following episodes, it really makes me feel like that Steven is only doing this for the sake of making Onion important because if we watch this episode with Onion only with Onion only without the appearance of Steven, it really probably makes the episode shallow and honestly boring. And for how Onion is portrayed in this episode as a troublemaker by using the replicator wand in order to make multiple and multiple replicas, the only thing I can think of is is the fact that he has no brain, and the only thought that he has is just being rude to other people by getting what he wants, and the fact that he doesn't speak. I can understand not having a speaking ability when it comes to speaking disabilities, but at the same time when it comes to how he's betrayed in this episode, I can't be able to feel any sympathy towards the guy because he stole Steven's Ranger guy after he tried to search everywhere for it. Believe me when I say this, is that for how Onion is portrayed in this episode, honestly, it's just difficult for me to understand people liking him. Like, it's debatable if people may find likability in the guy in the same ways as Ronald though when it comes to a few people, but as far as I'm concerned, whenever I look at Onion in this episode, and how he he just stole Ranger Guy from Steven sums up a lot that this entire episode made it difficult for me to feel any sympathy towards the guy, especially when it comes to the following episodes. Because when it comes to Onion Friend and Onion Gain, they are a lot more difficult for me to understand Onion's point of view, even though in the second episode, Onion Friend is a demonstration on why Steven needs to hang out with Onion. To be real with you, when it comes to the ending, stating that Onion is lonely because his father, Yellowtail, is always out in the sea, I really feel like that that message alone sums up that Onion is lonely, but at the same time, mainly lonely in a way that he just is, is just difficult to cooperate with. Because I can guarantee you that if the other characters tried to hang out with Onion, he wouldn't be able to fit in due to how he is when it comes to his loneliness. And since Steven is the only character who is willing to help out Onion's problem, Onion Friend and Onion Gain are going to be slightly complicated when it comes to talking about Onion's characterization. For the episode itself, I will admit that Onion replicating multiple things is ruining Beach City and that's where the characters need to stop Onion, but considering that most of the problems they've stated centering around Onion, Onion's characterization is what's overshadowing this episode to the point that I can't be able to look at this episode on its own without thinking about Onion, mainly the fact that Onion is the main character and de facto antagonist in this whole thing. Trust me, when it comes to the bits of St Steven trying to find Ranger Guy, it's understandable because an action figure, action figure is sometimes difficult to find for how popular it is. But it wasn't enough to make this episode better, especially while Steven changed his mind about Ranger Guy in the spam of 10 to 20 seconds. Which shows that the pacing of this episode wasn't really the best, even though that they're trying to have Steven being close with Onion, but not in the way that really makes me understand on how he's willing to put aside his negativity, main, mainly Onion's negativity. So as you can tell, I didn't like this episode to the point that 
I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. And it's Content Crisis 3 material, but at the same time, if I really wanted to review this episode as part of Content Crisis 3, I would have done it way earlier. But at the same time, there are also the other Onion episodes that I need to discuss later on that is also mixed to me. But let's get into the following episode, which is the last episode of Season 1 that I have yet to review. House Guest is... Well, I have complicated feelings towards ever since making this video, because one of the reasons onto why I skipped this episode is because, for me personally, it's mainly a Steven and Greg episode, but not really an episode that I had in mind. And keep in mind, I skipped this episode without watching it, and watching it, it kind of made me regretful for skipping it in the first place. After the events of Ocean Gem, where Greg's van got destroyed along with his leg getting broken, this leads to Steven using his saliva powers to heal Greg's leg, but it didn't work out. So, he takes his dad inside of his house in order to keep him occupied. The Crystal Gems give Greg a Warp Whistle whenever he needs assistance from the Crystal Gems whenever they use the Warp Pads to different locations. But this only leads to him using the Warp Whistle unnecessarily rather than actual emergencies. Steven keeps coming back to Greg and then after witnessing that he can actually walk on both legs, Despite telling him to get donuts, even though that he got foods out of the refrigerator on his own. His main intentions is to him hanging out with Steven again, which for me personally, sums up a lot that his behavior is justified. Because I've seen this plot done multiple times where a character uses something in order to get attention from other people, but it's not really for emergencies. It's, it's, insignific it's insignificant things that don't really matter. Well, you can tell for a fact that they're only using it in order to get the attention and getting benefits from people. But in this case, Greg isn't using any benefits from Steven. He just wants to hang out with him. Honestly, the fact that I skipped this episode because it has a major impact when the objective that the characters need to do is really important in the same ways as the other episodes that I've talked about in the Oreo seasons where it has a huge statue of some sort. Believe me, this marathon was, a, was difficult to pick the episodes to review while skipping ones that got me overwhelmed. Believe me, this episode really, sim really showcases on the characters trying to hang out with each other, but at the same time, more important stuff is going on. And I gotta be real with you, this episode demonstrates on how it has both sides of something really important, all the while having an insignificant thing in comparison to the big thing just isn't as important, but for the main character wanting to get attention from another character works correctly. Especially the song that Steven and Greg sang, which is Dear Old Dad, which I'm honestly surprised that I skipped an episode that actually has a song that was really good. It is really good, actually. Believe me. I really feel like that this episode demonstrates the bond between Steven and Greg a lot more when it comes to Leo episodes. And believe me, when I saw this episode, when it came to rewatching these episodes, I just see this episode as nothing more. Which really shows that skipping the episodes is sometimes a good thing, just in the case of the last episodes I've just talked about. Well, aside from the pilot. This episode... Like I said, I regret skipping out on, because we watching this episode, it's a good episode. The climax while Steven and Greg work together is honestly good, to the point that it made me appreciate this episode a lot more. If anything, if they didn't have a climax centering around the droids that is gonna cause a lot of corruption, I'm pretty sure that this episode will have been nothing and that would have been more of an excuse of skipping the episode entirely. 
With that being said, I'm giving this episode an 8 out of 10, which is honestly the closest I can give an episode when it comes to this type of video, but believe me, the unexpected always happens for all of us. The next episode is Love Letters, where Jamie develops a crush towards Garnet when it comes to love at first sight, and Stephen and Connie needs to write him a love letter after he sent the, his love letter to Garnet, who rejects it immediately, considering that she's a fusion. I was originally going to review this episode earlier this year as part of Valentine's Half Month 6, but since I scrapped that schedule, I ended up scrapping my review of this episode. Believe me, I had multiple options on what time I want to review this episode, to the point that including it in a top 10s list for Valentine's Half Month schedule or the next year's Valentine's Half Month schedule, this review had been flip-flopping in schedules multiple times, and at this point, reviewing this for this miscellaneous video is honestly for the best. Also, not to mention that I skipped this episode when I did the Carnival episodes, because this episode, while it's cute to see Steven and Connie trying to help out Jamie, and they're not really into the relationship completely when it comes to them being together when it comes to romance, but at the same time, this isn't really a Steven and Connie episode, and mostly a Jamie episode. And all honestly, this episode has been on the shelf so many times that it's honestly becoming depressing. With that out of the way, I found this episode entertaining, mainly the fact that it was bound to happen to have one of the Beach City citizens to have a crush towards one of the Crystal Gems, and in Jamie's case, considering that his crush towards Garnet is that powerful and his reaction upon giving Stephen and Connie his letter to Garnet. To tell you the truth, it's difficult to maintain control when it comes to love at first sight. And judging of how Ruby and Sapphire didn't had love at first sight when they first met with e when they first met with each other for the first time, it would probably be a difficult case of Garnet having different development that wouldn't even work, so having her being intelligent by not going out with Jamie, and the fact that she denies him right in front of him, considering that Steven was the one who wrote the letter alongside Connie. Believe me, if Garnet was capable of writing letters, then I'm pretty sure that her development wouldn't be the same that we're all familiar with, to the point that Ruby and Sapphire's love at first sight will probably make them difficult to become a fusion together. Like, imagine Jamie's reaction, but with Ruby or Sapphire in the position, because to tell you the truth, it wouldn't even work. If anything, it really shows that the many times I've seen this scene, it may be heartbreaking in Jamie's point of view, but at the same time, it's honestly humorous knowing full well that he can't be able to understand what love is really about other than love at first sight, considering that Garnet is the total opposite of what Jamie felt in the entire episode. The conversation that she had with Jamie really shows that she's just trying to proved to Jamie that there was more to love than love at first sight. And for her to give him confidence on working at local theater, it leads to the events of the Jamie episode later in season 2 that I've talked about early on in this marathon. I have to admit that for how this episode is structured, it really sums up a lot that the unexpected can happen when it comes to Garnet dealing with these situations and while Steven and Connie are trying to make things easier for Jamie. But then again, Jamie's love at first sight really got the better of him and it only took him through the next two seasons to get over Garnet. I just feel like that this episode, despite scrapping it multiple times and flip-flopping due to multiple schedule changes, I really feel like that this episode is for what it is, and it's honestly how 
people would probably feel if they ever experienced a crystal gem in in fiction, mainly in the show's canon. I'm just saying that even though that Jamie went over his head about love at first sight, at the very least, he wouldn't be the he wouldn't be selfish on doing selfish deeds in order to impress Garnet. Because to tell you the truth, that will have made the episode bad. Which I'm thankful that it didn't. I'm giving this episode a 7.5 out of 10. Oh boy. If you wanna know onto why that some episodes are better off are better off skipping, then this episode Rising Tikes and Crashing Skies sums up a lot that the Steven only perspective is mainly him and the Crystal Gems Crystal Gems watching the entire video, and to tell you the truth, even if the entire purpose of the episode is just is just to showcase how insecure Wagnardo is, at the same time, the fact that nobody calls him out normally and calmly really makes me think that this episode just feels one of the most worthless episodes, and not only from this show, but basically any other cartoon. The entire episode is Wagnardo doing a documentary, and it's mainly his own point of view on the Crystal Gems causing havoc, and they're the reason why all of this is happening. But in his point of view, he really thinks that the Crystal Gems are the enemy in all this, which, in all honesty, it isn't. To tell you the truth, guys, if I really wanted to make a review off of this episode, it would probably be in a documentary point of view, but the thing is, I've seen multiple documentaries that were mainly in different points of views off of people's experiences on this whole situation, but they don't act like Wignardo in this episode. Because Wignardo is the reason onto why that this episode is worthless and bad. From the beginning and end of this episode, I'm honestly more annoyed of seeing Renard though in this position, judging of how that he just gets the wrong answers, and when some of the characters like Garnet are just faking in order to have Renard though be in the white, it really makes me feel like that every single character in this episode aside from Renard though, well maybe aside from PD considering that he was holding the camera to help out his brother's documentary, but at the same time, it's he's really not into the whole documentary thing. Really sums up that this episode would have been better suited if it was centering around Renato and PD. But then again, I really feel like that they just wanted to have more focus on the character Renato and making him intentionally unlikable. But the thing is, even when you try to make a character unlikable, there was a difference on making the character unlikable to root against, but also there's a difference of not enjoying the character completely. Honestly, it's just weird to think that Steven and the Crystal Gems are willing to pull up with Nardano regardless, mainly from Keep Beach City Weird and the Wag Nardano episode. But every time I look at this episode when it comes to Wag Nardano's character, he just can't be able to see everyone else's point of view, and he's only thinking about his own point of view the most. Which for me personally, I just don't even understand how it's really possible to think that we never had an episode centering around him and PD, because I would be fully committed with the idea that that potential would've, would've improved Wagnardo's character, judging of how that Lars ended up getting better development when it came to the horror club episode between him and Wagnardo, but judging of how that Wagnardo had a different direction, while Lars had a better direction, it sums up a lot onto why people barely watch his content. Believe me, the fact that Steven and the Crystal Gems are literally the only ones who watched it to which Steven liked it, really made me think that they're really trying too hard to make Renato this way, and they're not even bothering to have any likability in him for the right reasons. Like I said, just because you intentionally make a character unlikable, that doesn't automatically mean that people are instantly going to root against the character, because 
when I don't root against the Kyoto and I don't like the Kyoto itself, sums up a lot that rooting against the Kyoto isn't the solution to the episode's problems. Honestly, the only good thing about me reviewing this episode is that if I didn't make this miscellaneous video, I wouldn't be able to touch this episode, even if I get the chance when it comes to Cartoon Crisis 3 related or content-wise material. As far as I'm concerned, the episode itself gets a 2.5 out of 10, which really sums up a lot that I just can't be able to get over of how lazy and poorly directed this episode is. And I'm not saying on the fact that Wignard, though, is a terrible director. In all honesty, I'm mostly focusing on the people making the episode itself. Anyway, let's get into the second Onion episode, Onion Friend. Well, after Onion stole something from Stevens, Steven and Amethyst go straight to where Onion lives, and it's revealed that Vidalia was using Amethyst as her muse when it comes to making art. And this also showcases the relationship that Vidalia, that Vidalia and Amethyst had, which for me personally, just put Steven in a position that he's unable to get out of. Because now that he needs to hang out with Onion, which leads to him having Amethyst and Vidalia hanging out more, which, oh my god, I honestly feel bad for Steven when it comes to the position that he's in. Now, to be fair, this is the first time where we get to see Vidalia and what her life is like when it comes to raising sour cream and onion. And I will admit that when it comes to how she raises onion and noticing the whole past with Greg, for me personally, I really feel like that whole character change sums up a lot of how she acts differently in this in comparison to one of the Greg episodes. And I will, I will admit that her interactions with Amethyst really are the highlight of this entire episode. However, whenever I look into the point of view of Steven and how he has to put up with Onion, believe me when I say this, is that every time that Onion is just trying to showcase on how his life is different from everyone else and how he's lonely and he isn't like Sour Cream who has friends, which is going to explore in Onion in, with Onion Gain, at the, at the very least, I really feel like that the point of view that I'm seeing from Onion is the fact that he sees something in Steven, but it has nothing to do with nothing to do with his gem powers. It's just mainly Steven being a regular human, which I will admit that being part human is something that Steven can value more. But at the same time, he does that method when it comes to hanging out with the other Beach City citizens that are better than Onion. And when Onion is willing to give his guy, his well guy collection action figures to Steven, I have to understand that this is supposed to be a good moment from Onion, but at the same time, judging of how that Steven just let go of the whale action figure, which is Ranger Guy from the Onion Trade episode because it was boring, and he's actually willing to get action figures that are basically the same quality as Ranger Guy. And the fact that Onion took Ranger Guy from him, mainly stealing, I honestly don't see the appeal of this moment at all. That's the problem when a character like Onion does good deeds, and those deeds don't make me convinced, because it really feels like that whenever they do these types of methods when it comes to characters that have disabilities that are different from other disabilities, they don't do enough in order to make me feel sympathy towards the character itself. Because with the highlights of this episode centering around Vidalia and Amethyst, all I can think of is, is that Steven is just trying to put up with the bad from Onion in order to make up for the good for characters like Amethyst, which is something that Steven would usually do, but in cases is involving Onion, I'm not believing that whatsoever. Because the fact that he's willing to go against Kevin, all the while not going against Onion completely despite being a kid, it just makes me question on how Steven can willing to, can willingly forgive literally everyone, including the diamonds, which I'm gonna talk talk about in the diamond episodes. But as for Onion, believe me, I just don't understand what Steven sees in Onion at times, and it just really feels like the fact that 
He's literally just doing what he can in order to make things right for other characters, but it's literally not the reasons that I approved from other episodes that are done much more better for that factor than this. Admittedly, if this episode focused around Amethyst and Vidalia, it would actually work out judging of how the chemistry is what really saves this episode from being bad. It's just a shame that Steven just isn't around with them that long when it comes to him hanging out with Onion. Because for me personally, the fact that Un the, the fact that Steven is willing to forgive other characters when it comes to the flaws and whatnot, I just feel like that the dynamic between Steven and Onion just isn't working out because of how confusing and complicated it is. Which really sums up into why I skip this episode, the last Onion episode, and the next Onion episode. Seriously, at times I understand that Vidalia is a different character than how she was from the Greg episode from Season 3, but at the same time, judging of how she can't be able to control Onion completely in comparison to how Sour Cream is raised differently, really sums up a lot that she just probably doesn't want to go through so much stress by raising another child. Which could be my guess, but at the same time, it really makes me feel like that I'm pretty sure that Wagnardolo should have done a documentary centering around Onion, judging of how different Onion is. But then again, the Crystal Gems and the enemies are a lot more weirder than Onion, which sums up the point of view of but not to those reasonings of giving a documentary center around that makes sense, even though that his point of view is way too egotistical. Because, to tell you the truth, if there's one thing that Onion isn't in comparison to Wignot, though, is that he isn't egotistical. Which, for me personally, I will admit that the next Onion episode showcases of that. But at the same time, with that being the last episode to review of this video, I'm gonna be really honest with you once we get to that episode. This episode is the best Onion episode, but at the same time that's not saying much. I'm giving the episode a 5.5 out of 10, and we're gonna be heading into the two episodes from Season 4. Future Boy Zetron really felt like an episode that is just mostly parroting the Tom Hanks big movie from 1988 and judging of how this episode only gave me memories of the Tom Hanks movie and just mainly seeing Steven in a Zorchan costume, I really felt like that this episode wasn't really that important, but to tell you the truth, People were being mostly harsh towards this episode, and I have to admit, I was actually being harsh towards Mr. Smiley in the first videos of this marathon. The premise of the episode is that after Steven destroyed Zeltron accidentally, this leads to Mr. Smiley putting Steven into a Zeltron costume, which leads to Steven performing in front of so many people at Beach City when it comes to telling the future. I'm gonna be really honest with you, people's criticisms towards the episode is the fact that Mr. Smiley put Steven in this position, but at the same time, Steven destroyed m many of attractions in Beach City. So for me personally, I really feel like that Mr. Smiley is only doing this for the sake of having a profit while preventing anything happening again when it comes to Steven destroying the amuse the constructions of the amusement park and the video games inside of the arcade. Because to tell you the truth, we can all remember that Steven had to repay literally everything of what happened when it comes to the meat mayhem machine that he had to destroy it which leads to him clean up the entire arcade, which for me personally, it's literally the only way for him to make up the money that he owes to Mr. Smiley. I'm gonna be totally honest with you, in my audio videos of this marathon, I was literally starting somewhere, and when I got to Mr. Smiley for the first time, I literally had to jump into conclusions, because for me personally, it just really rubs me the wrong way when it comes to how Mrs. Smiley was betrayed, but after thinking about it now, 
He has to be Mr. Smiley by smiling all the time, and judging of how he can't be able to stand it, I... I, I am fully remembering the times where other characters from other shows have to put a smile on the face and it's just a nightmare for them. So, in all honesty, just seeing Mr. Smiley in this, I can feel sympathy towards him and I regret everything that I've said about him. Mainly in my earlier videos of this marathon. And since this is the first and only episode where he does something as a main character, sums up a lot that this is mostly a long time coming for how his life is has changed in comparison to one of his old friends that he hasn't seen in such a long time. Which leads to Steven having future vision thanks to Garnet kissing him. Really made really is a good idea in order to understand the point of view of so many people, but since that the person that is depressed had no future when it comes to the future vision that Steven saw, it really comes in full circle that these episodes have a purpose. And for me personally, I just missed something in this episode that really feels like that this episode was being a little too harsh on. I'm just saying that even though that the episodes in this miscellaneous videos, in this miscellaneous video is debatable when it comes to how they are differently from each other, but when I watch this episode again, the only thing I got the impression is that Mr. Smiley isn't always smiling all the time, and when it comes to the person that he hasn't met in a long time, it really sums up that his life by himself really makes it difficult for him to be smiley behind the behind closed doors when it comes to being in a different emotion privately. Believe me, I really feel like that when Steven is trying to find a future for Mrs. Smiley and the person who is depressed, really made me understand Mrs. M Mr. Smiley's character a lot more. The person is Quentin who Harold, who is Mr. Smiley, calls Frowny, and they actually do comedy gigs before their lives changed. And I have to be perfectly real with you for how this episode is executed. It's it wouldn't hurt to have an episode centering around the two for at least one time. Because whenever they actually try to make these types of characters work in a scenario, it actually makes me feel sympathy towards Mr. Smiley, who is Harold, and Frowny, who is Quentin. Believe me, skipping this episode was a mistake, but in comparison to the other episodes that I've skipped, it wasn't a big mistake. I'm just saying that I really had so many impressions when it comes to doing this marathon, and when it comes to this episode in particular, it just really feels like that I'm just seeing something differently that sums up of how many years that my first binge watch really gave me different perspectives. Granted, this episode isn't negative, it's just mostly in the middle ground of important and not important. Let me just say for a fact that whenever I think about Mr. Smiley, I instantly think of him basically the person who is in charge of Beach City amusement parks and the arcade. So... I just didn't really remember his character that much after watching this episode years ago, so revisiting this episode is honestly a good choice. But then again, nearly most of these episodes in this video is mostly a good choice onto reviewing them now than never. If you ask me, this episode was being too harsh towards when it comes to Mr. Smiley's character and the ending, well, he told Stephen that he has to pay up the debt. Believe me, if he didn't do that, then he would've... If he didn't pay up the debt on multiple things that he did in the past by wrecking amusement park rides, amusement park rides along with the arcade machine, mainly the Meet Mania machine, he would've probably stayed as Zoltron for weeks or even months. If you ask me, it's probably best if he actually fixed up most of the things that he did in the past rather than not doing them at all. Because otherwise, 
I think that the people viewing on Mr. Smiley is going a little too harsh, and to tell you the truth, I honestly, I honestly see his point of view a lot more better than other people. So, I'm giving this episode a 7 out of 10. It's an unexpected rating, but I guess a lot can be unexpected. Which leads to us the final episode that I skipped, and it's the final Onion episode. Onion Gain. I've heard people that this is one of the worst episodes from Steven Universe, and after we watching this episode after so many years, I'm gonna be truthfully honest that it's definitely one of the worst episodes, and the worst Onion episode by far. It really feels like that every time I think about this episode after watching it, after many years, it really feels like that Onion's character is just difficult to understand when it comes to how he can't be able to fit in, even though that there are many opportunities for him to actually fit in with the white friends that he should make. Because every time I look at his group friends, it really feels like that he can only communicate with people who are just like him. And as for Steven, I seriously do not understand onto why they have to make Steven dumb down for the sake of plot in these occasions. In season 4, I'm not really buying it completely, judging of how it really feels on the same levels as a, of how he was betrayed in the new laws. But at the same time, he at least tries to do something, in this, he's mainly doing something for the sake of plot, which really made me difficult to understand his point of view of how he's willing to stay friends with Onion. You want to know what this entire episode feels like? It's trying to send the message on the group of friends being a bad influence, but at the same time, Onion's friends are literally the same as him, except that in this case, Steven is being in the position on being with people that aren't like him, nor the other Beach City citizens, and when it's been revealed that Onion's friends only appear during the summertime and not at all in the seasons autumn, winter, and spring, I can't understand onto how I'm supposed to feel sympathy towards Onion, judging of how I can't be able to see his point of view completely when all I can think of is, is that Steven just isn't smart enough to handle the situation by doing it properly and doing it smartly like he did by witnessing that Onion stole his Ranger Guy action figure. Whenever Steven is trying to do a nice thing for people at Beach City, it's mainly understanding the problems and understanding the point of view at times, which he puts aside his own things for the sake of other people. But when it comes to this episode, I just don't find it believable to see Steven in this position, judging of how that he has grudges towards Kevin, and then when it comes to Onion, I don't even understand how he's willing to let all the bad things aside when it comes to Onion's friends for the sake of help for the sake of helping Onion out. This episode makes it look like that Steven is supposed to be a normal Beach City citizen, but at the same time, he isn't. So it really feels like that he's a different character, but he's just taking the role as a different character. Which for me personally, I just don't understand Steven's good nature at times whenever he's putting aside his own deeds or his own needs for the sake of other people like Onion's friends. Because as far as I'm concerned, the fact that he's not making a stand for himself in the same ways that, that he did towards Renato from the Renato episode really makes me convinced that his relationship with Onion is just difficult for me to understand and also difficult for me to see the characterization of Onion. The reason onto why Steven came back to Onion, even though it's technically the other way around since that Onion went back to Steven's place, Steven had calls with multiple people, but they're busy and he had no one to, to go to by hanging out, which is why he kept hanging out Onion, which in all honesty would have made sense, but at the same time, couldn't he just hang out with the Crystal Gems? Like, 
Considering that the Crystal Gems aren't really doing much of missions during this time of the series when it comes to Stephen's development improving, all I can think of is, is that the missions that they have are basically just basically for plot conveniences for this episode to walk. Like, if they're doing something else rather than stopping enemies, then all I can think of is, is that the spell time involving the Crystal Gems by this point is just either just staying at the beach house or just going to different places that just isn't, that doesn't have any villains or whatsoever or enemies. I'm just saying that this really confuses me a lot more when it comes to how this episode's execution just makes me question, make, makes me have more questions than understanding the point of view of Steven and Onion. With the, with this element of Steven and Onion having nothing better to do other than going to the elements that they do the most when it comes to hanging out, I just feel like that it just makes me think that Onion is only resorting to hanging out with Steven because for the sake of the plot, to have Steven being open-minded with Onion. All the while, Steven is willing to make up with the bad in order to have Onion have the good. I just really feel like that these, ty that these types of characters just don't work together when it comes to a dynamic. Like, the dynamic of Steven of Laws, I can understand that. And... For me personally, whenever you think about Onion in this show, you always question onto what he feels at times and how he just he just isn't willing to give new elements, mainly people at Beach City, a chance rather than hanging out with the people that he can only hang out during the summer. The only thing that this episode made me impressed, which is unintentionally, is this is basically Quake of the Creek before Quake of the Creek became a thing. Mainly the fact that Onion's friends look like Quake of the Creek characters in some other capacity. And even though that they don't speak as much, it just really feels like that the structure involving these characters doing things of what Quake of the, of what Quake of the Creek characters do from Quake of, the, Quake of the Creek is what really made me somewhat entertained, but at the same time, that's only Quick of the Creek thinking rather than Steven Universe thinking. So aside from that, this episode is one of the worst episodes from Steven Universe. I understand that people may see something in the Onion that they enjoy, but at the same time, just because I really like Steven Universe doesn't automatically mean that I like every single character. As far as I'm concerned, there's always a couple of characters that I don't like in other cartoons, which really shows that every single cartoon isn't perfect, even though that their own direction is supposed to be different. But at the same time, just because they have to pick a different direction doesn't automatically mean that I like every single character, which includes Onion and Renard though. With that being said, I'm giving this episode a 2 out of 10, and that wraps up my miscellaneous video of Steven Universe. Well, mainly review of 9 episodes in the pilot, but at this point, I'm gonna be reviewing all the episodes from Steven Universe, even though that wasn't the intentional plan. But at the same time, when it comes to September, it will be a sign of relief that I'm gonna be finishing off this series for good. I'll see you guys tomorrow. You.